Welcome back to DesignSmith. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Step and Repeat tool and the Blend tool. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Okay, so the Step and Repeat tool is a very powerful tool that you can use to quickly and easily repeat your objects. It's a really great tool for working efficiently within Illustrator. So we'll just start off with a quick example here. I'm gonna just draw a circle, and now I'm gonna select this circle, hold down Option and drag, and you can hold down Shift to keep it in line. If you're using Windows, hold down Alt and then Shift. And then after you've made that movement, go ahead and hit Command or Control D on your keyboard, and that will repeat the item exactly the way that you moved it. So that's a really great way to repeat the objects. However, what if you wanted to add some variance to it? Let's go ahead and select all of these and hit delete. And now we'll select this one and go up to object, transform and transform each. And what this is gonna do is every single time we hit command or control D, it's going to make the changes depending on what we enter into these fields. So let's say we want it to scale 75% horizontal and vertical, move over to the right by half an inch and then move up by half an inch. We're dealing with a circle here, so let's make sure that our angle of rotation is at zero. I'm gonna uncheck transform patterns and I'm gonna leave random checked. And for the anchor point, I'm just gonna leave it at center. So let's go ahead and hit copy. And now we can keep on pressing Command D or Control D, and it will just keep on doing that instance right there. And you may say to yourself, well, what am I gonna do with this? Well, what you can do is if you wanna have a random pattern of spheres all over your artboard, you just select all of them like I've done here, go over to align and make sure that align to artboard is checked. And now you can hit distribute spacing vertically and horizontally. And there you go, you've got like a random little pattern of circles right here, and you didn't have to do it individually. And I'll show you one more thing with the step and repeat using rotation. So I've drawn this circle right here, and let's go over here to object, transform, transform each. And we're gonna scale it down by 75%, but I'm gonna change the vertical to zero because I only want it to move horizontally. And now I'm gonna hit two inches and uncheck random. And you know what, let's set that to one inch instead. So what this is gonna do is it's going to scale down by 75% and move over to the right by one inch every single time we hit copy and then repeat. So hit copy and then we're just gonna repeat, 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 just like that. And I think that looks good. So now what we'll do is select all of these, go to align and make sure align to selection is selected. And we're gonna distribute the spacing horizontally. So now these are all equidistant from each other. And now I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard to bring up the rotation tool. And let's zoom in. You can see the little crosshairs are right here. We're gonna hold down Option or Alt, bring this over to the center. And now that brings up our rotation tool. So I'm gonna set this to about 15 degrees maybe, and then hit Copy. And I'm gonna zoom out. And we're gonna hit Command D and you can hold it down and then it just repeats everything right there. So you've got this really cool pattern right here that we created only using a few clicks. So as you can imagine, there are a lot of things that you can do with this technique. Okay, so now let's move over to the blend tool. So what this is gonna do is you can take two or more objects and you can blend them together in such a way that they kind of create their own pattern going from one end to the other. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So we're going to have two of these right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna make these two relatively different from each other. First thing we'll do is just use color. So I'm gonna set this one to red, this one to green and select both of these. And if you're on a Mac, you're gonna do Command, Option and B on your keyboard. If you're on Windows, it'll be Control Alt B. And as you can see here, we've blended this. It's kind of like a gradient going on here. And we do have some options. So if you go over here to the blend tool in your toolbar, double click on that. And right now it's set to smooth color. If you're wanting a gradient, this is a really quick way of doing it. However, if you want to do specified steps, then you can click that from the drop down and you can see how many steps are in between here. So you can go in here and edit this. And this is also a really good way of kind of creating some color palettes and getting a really good color range. And I'm gonna set this to eight. So what that means is there are eight instances between these two main colors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So make sure you keep that in mind. If you have a specific number in total that you're wanting to go for, make sure that you account for the ones on the left and the right. And we'll hit okay. And what's really cool about this is that you can still make edits to it after you've done the blend. So we're gonna hit A on our keyboard to activate our direct selection tool. And so we can either select the one at the beginning or the one at the end. We can't select any of the ones in between here. So I'm gonna select the green one and we'll just change that to yellow. And you can see everything here updates between those two colors. And also with the direct selection tool still selected, we can hit R on our keyboard and hold down option. And this will bring up our rotate tool. And as you can see here, we can just kind of make some really cool rotations here. 
if we want to do something like that, then it's going to blend everything from the starting point to the ending point, and it's going to make everything in between there adjust to those parameters. And again, with the direct selection tool, we can hit S on our keyboard and we can scale this down. So if we want the yellow one to be smaller, we can do something like this. It kind of gives it like a really trippy pie chart type of thing. And if you want to do non-uniform, you can only change the vertical and set the horizontal to zero. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. And I'll show you one more cool thing that you can do with the blend tool. You're not limited to squares, triangles, and circles and things like that. So I'm just going to make my own little shape here. And then I'll make another one over here that's a little bit different. And let's change the color of this. I want something like a lighter blue or something. We've got a very 90s vibe going on here. So now I'm going to move this to the top left and move this to the bottom right. And now I'm going to select both of these. And we're going to do our Command Option or Control Alt B. And we'll blend those together. Again, go to our Blend tool choose specified steps and bring it down to about right here. So now we have all of those steps in between there. However, the two shapes are very similar to each other and they're also very similar in size. So I'm gonna undo this and I'm gonna do something completely different. Let's just do something like maybe a triangle because you can blend together whatever you want here. And let's take this down to like a low number so you can see exactly what's going on. You can see that as it's moving from the top left to the bottom right, it is slowly kind of morphing into what is eventually that triangle. And you can hit OK. And let's say that for whatever reason you really liked this particular shape and you wanted to kind of grab that shape and manipulate it and do whatever you want with it. With everything here selected, we're going to go up here to Object, Expand, and make sure that all three of these are checked and hit OK. And so now these are all expanded and they're all their own individual shapes. However, there's one last thing we need to do and that's ungroup them. So let's go to Object and hit Ungroup. And now we can select just that one shape. And I'll show you one last thing that you can also blend is text. So let's go ahead and select both of these and do our blend command. And check this out, we've got the serif type and it's gradually going into the script type. And yes, you can change the text and check that out, it's even blending the text. So you can do some pretty cool and creative things here with the step and repeat tool and the blend tools. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you wouldn't mind, please consider subscribing to support the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.